Mishnah Brura, chapter 431, the time for examining for Chametz. 1. At the beginning of the night of the 14th of Nisan, one must examine for Chametz by the light of a candle in holes and crevices in all the places where it is usual to bring in Chametz. 2. Everybody should take care on that night not to begin any work and not to eat until he, he has examined his property for Chametz. Even if one has set a time, sorry, even if one has a set time, then for studying Torah, he should not engage in study until he has examined for Chametz. If one began to study Torah while it was still day, he does not need to interrupt his study to examine for Chametz. There are authorities who say that one is required to interrupt his study to examine for Chametz. Back to the Mishnah Brura. Okay, point one. At the beginning of the night of etc. of the night of the 14th of Nisan, i.e. immediately after the appearance of the stars, when there is still a little daylight, it is proper to begin examining for Chametz in order that one will not remit, be remiss about the examination or forget to do it. So, point two, one must examine. Note 2. One must also nullify the Chametz, then, as stated below in section 434, paragraph 2, according to Torah law, to Torah law, one of these measures is sufficient. This is because when one has nullified the Chametz in his heart and declared it ownerless, it is no longer his, and therefore he will not transgress because of it the prohibition against having Chametz in one's possession on Pesach. One will certainly not transgress that prohibition if he examined and searched for Chametz and disposed of it, so that it is no longer in existence. However, the sages of blessed memory were stringent and ordained that only one of these measures is insufficient, but it is essential to do both. They did so because nullification depends on the thinking and the attitude of the person who nullifies, and they were therefore afraid that someone who has Chametz worth several thousand may be loath to declare it ownerless, even if you'll say with his mouth that all this chametz should be nullified and ownerless and regarded as dirt, he will nevertheless not think in this in his heart and will not in fact nullify it with sincerity. If we would allow him to rely on nullification alone, he would then transgress the prohibition that chametz should not be seen in one's possession on Pesach, since he would not remove the chametz from his home. Furthermore, it may be that they made a dec the decree because they feared that since one is used, is used to eating chametz all year, if there would be chametz in his home or property on Pesach, he would forget that it is forbidden to eat it now and, will, and would come to eat it. The sages of blessed memory therefore ordained that even though one nullified his chametz, this is not sufficient, but he must examine his home to find the chametz in order to dispose of it, so that it is no longer in existence. He must, theref he must nevertheless also nullify the chametz in case he did not examine chametz candle. This is because one is required to examine in holes and crevices in daylight it is of no avail to that for that. In view of the fact that the examination must therefore be done by the light of a candle, the sages fix the time for the examination at night. Then candlelight is brighter than it is during the day, even in places which are dark by day. In addition, the night is also more suitable because it is a time when people are commonly at home. Note 4. Where it is usual to bring in, etc. This wording is imprecise. Even if it is not usual to bring, bring chametz into a particular place, but the place is only used for chametz occasionally, we are nevertheless afraid that one may have brought in chametz before there and this slipped from his mind as stated below in section 433, paragraph 3. Not to begin any work. Everyone should take care on that mind, not to begin any work. It is even forbidden for one to do so half an hour before the time for the examination has arrived in case it will come to continue once the time has arrived. It is likewise forbidden for one to enter a bathhouse or to do any of the other matters mentioned above in section 232 until he has examined for chametz. 
If someone forgot to examine for chametz at night, he is forbidden to do any of these things during the day as well, until he has examined for chametz. Note six. So everyone should take care on that night not to begin any work and not to eat. Mere partaking of food is allowed. This means that one may eat an egg, an egg's bulk of bread, but no more, or may eat even a large quantity of fruit, as as we have written at the end of section 232, see there in the Mishnah Bura. See the Bura Halacha there, that to eat a large quantity of fruit is only permitted during the half hour before the time for the examination has arrived. However, once the time for the examination has arrived, it is improper to delay the examination for long, even by merely eating fruit. Note 7. He should not engage in study. There are authorities who also forbid Torah study even during the half hour before the time for examining for chametz has arrived, unless one requested somebody to remind him to examine for chametz when the time for doing so arrives. The reason is that, is that if this would be allowed, one might come to continue studying for a long time. Other authorities rule as regards Torah study that it is permitted before the time for examining for chametz has arrived, and that one is only forbidden to engage in it once the time of the appearance of the stars has arrived. Even the authorities who forbid one to study Torah only forbid it when one studies at home. However, those who participate in the lesson of, hala, of Halakha in the Beis Midrash after the prayer service are permitted to do so before they have examined for Chametz, as they will definitely finish the lesson and will have to go home. Nevertheless, this is only permitted then if the study is without theorizing. But as regards study with theorizing, we are afraid in all cases that one may come, one may come to continue unduly one may come to continue unduly. So he should not engage in study until he has examined for Chemet. Note. As regards the prayer of the Mari of prayer service, those who pray the Mari of service at the proper time together with the congregation should pray before examining for Chemet, as it would be burdensome to assemble them afterwards. In addition, there are not so much grounds for fear that because of praying the Mari of service, one will forget to examine for Chemet. Since prayer is a set matter and a fear that one may come to continue unduly is therefore not relevant as regards prayer. If someone prays at home, he should get someone else to examine for chametz, and he himself should pray, as he will thus fulfill both requirements in their proper time. If there is nobody else who can examine for chametz, he should first pray and then examine for chametz. However, if he is, if he is used to praying alone, Always he should examine for Hamid's first, since in view of the fact that he's used to praying alone, we are not so afraid that he will subsequently forget to pray. Uh, so a commentator writes that one must pray first in all cases, as when one must perform a frequently recurring mitzvah, and a mitzvah which does not recur frequently, the frequently recurring mitzvah must be performed first. So if one began to study, and uh, note 9, the same ruling applies with respect to other work. Note number 10 is if one began to study Torah while it was still day. So, i.e., while it was still day, note 10, if you began during the time when it was permitted, when it was permitted, that is why he is not required to stop, since even as regards the reading of the reading of Shema, which is a Torah obligation, we rule in section 235, paragraph 2, that although it is forbidden for one to start eating close to the time for the reading, if he started eating earlier, permissibly he need not interrupt his eating. See there. If one began studying at a time when it was already forbidden, he must interrupt the study according to all authorities. This is because as long as one has not yet nullified the chametz, examining for chametz is a Torah obligation, and where a Torah obligation is involved, one is required to interrupt in such circumstances in order to fulfill the obligation as stated in section 235, paragraph 2. So note number 11, there are authorities who say that one is required to interrupt So his study. Even though he began the study permissibly, these authorities reason that the sages determined that a sifah should be performed initially at the beginning of the night. Therefore, he must interrupt in order that the mitzvah will be fulfilled as ordained. Note number 12, this appears to me the prevailing view. The same ruling applies with respect to other work that one is engaged in doing then. Nevertheless, it appears that it is unnecessary for him to interrupt his study until the time has arrived 
when the stars have appeared.